want to thank you for joining us today for the first part of a five-part series on becoming students of the Word. Becoming students of the Word. This tool right here, the Bible, the Word of God, is a very essential tool for the believer. And I believe that every single believer ought to be a student of the Word of God. I want to challenge you that if you have this in your home, don't let it catch dust. But I want you to utilize it. I know that um, in today's world, we have our Bibles on um, our smartphones, we have them on our iPads and all those things. Well, that's the same. But I want you to utilize the Word wherever it is in your home. And I want in this series over the next um, five sessions, to chat with us about becoming students of the Word. Now, when I say to you, become a student of the Word, I'm not saying to you that you need to head off to Bible school um, or seminary. I'm not saying to you um, that you have to attend special classes that teach you about the Word of God. But what I'm saying is that every believer needs to be a student of the Word of God. The Word of God is so valuable to us that we must see it as important. And so every lay person, um, not only persons who serve in specific areas of ministry, but I believe that every single believer needs to have a good grasp of the Word of God. And so I want to challenge you to stay with us over the next um, five sessions. Our sessions are going to be about 30 minutes um, for each of the sessions. But I want to give some insight into how you, um, as a lay person, can become a student of the Word of God. And I want to even be able to inspire persons who are experts, um, believe that you're an expert in the Word of God. I want to challenge you to even up um, your, your devotion to the Word of God even more. I want to challenge you to dig deeper. I want to challenge you to be more consistent even as you think of the Word of God and its importance in your life. But let's pray before we get into today's session. Father, we want to thank you for being our God. We want to thank you for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We are glad that the entrance of your word gives light, it gives direction, it gives guidance. And we are glad that we can read your word and study your word. We can share your word together. We pray that you would bless us today. We pray that the Holy Spirit, the divine interpreter, would come and reveal the truths of your word to us. And we pray that you would bless this session and may someone be enlightened and edified in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, it's a five-part plan, five-step plan in becoming a student of the Word of God. And why is the Word of God so important to us? Well, first of all, our faith is a Bible-centered faith. If you are a child of God, if you are a Christian, the faith, our faith is a Bible-centered faith. The principles that we live by are all found in the Word of God. The standards that we live by, our standard for living is the Word of God. The Word of God um, self declares that it is food for our souls. It is a lamp unto our feet. It is a light unto our path. The entrance of the Word gives light. It gives guidance. It gives direction. Um, and so I want us to grasp that, that the Word of God is important to us. The Word of God is God-breathed. Um, it is not just a book that was just put together um, to confine us to things that we ought to believe, but God breathed um, life into um, individuals, inspired them to write these words. And so we see them as the divine um, word of Almighty God. And so I want to share with us, first of all today, that if we're going to become a student of the word of God, it must begin with reading the word. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So so our, our first word, and, and we're going to be going upward, is going to be knowledge um, that we need to under, we need to spend some time in the word of God so that we get to know what the word of God says um, reading the word of God reading the word of God is very important for us and, and I want to share a few things with us today about reading the word of God first of all I want to say that we need to read regularly regularly um, the Bible says of the Berean brethren that they're regularly search the scriptures for themselves to see if what they were being taught was true. It's important that we spend time for ourselves regularly reading the word of God. Um, what this will do for us is it will keep our minds focused on the things of God. 
you would realize that the things that you read have a way of occupying your mind as you go through the day. And so when you read something, um, because reading allows you to imagine, y your mind gets involved in the reading process and, and your entire being seems to be um, encapsulated with the whole concept of reading. And, and so when, when we read the Word of God, it, it has a way of staying with us, staying on our minds, and we're able to think about it as we go through the day. Um, there are lots of people, the first thing they grab in the morning is the newspaper. They want to find out everything that happened um, the day before. Um, I want to say to you that the Word of God is more up to date than tomorrow's newspaper. And I want to challenge you to read the Word of God. There are those persons who go for the horoscopes. They, they want to find out what, what the stars are saying um, about them and about all the other persons who are born in, in that block of time. Very interesting. But, but the thing about it is that for the believer, we need to grab the Word of God. And we need to spend time in the Word of God. We need to read regularly. Now, there are some people who will say, well, I know that there are some parts of the Bible that are hard to read. Um, what about those parts where I don't understand? Well, that's fine, because we also believe that the Word of God is quick and powerful. Quick meaning that it is alive. Um, and so even when you read it and you don't think it is doing something, it is doing something because it is the Word of God. Um, and it is powerful. It is active. Um, in fact, it self declares that it is sharper than any two-edged sword. It, it is able to get into the parts of your being um, that it needs to get to. That's what the Word of God is able to do. So when you read the Holy Spirit, He comes and He reveals the truths of the Word to you. And, and there are times when you may not have all the tools that you need um, to be able to study effectively. That's okay. We're going to talk about tools um, in our next session when we look at Bible study. But I just want to challenge us, first of all, to become persons who read the Word of God. And, and first of all, I'm saying to you, read regularly. Secondly, I want you to read eagerly. Read eagerly. In other words, develop the appetite for the Word of God. Um, it is interesting when you read Psalm 119, that it has 176 verses and there are only three verses of the 176 that don't say something about the Word of God. Over and over and over the psalmist is talking about the Word. He uses the word precepts. Um, he uses the word commandments. Um, he uses the word statutes, but, but he's talking about the word. And over and over, he's talking about the word. He says, how sweet is your word to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Um, everything um, in, in that psalm is about the word of God. Longest psalm in the book, but, but consistently, it talks about the word of God. In fact, in the very first psalm, he talks about the fact that um, the man who is going to prosper, the man who is going to do great things, um, the man who is going to grow, and, and the man who's going to be able to avoid and shun those things that are evil and wrong is the man that delights in the law of the Lord and in it he meditates day and night. And so um, over and over the, the psalmist declares a love and eagerness for the word of God. Um, and, and there's everything in the word of God. There is drama. In the Word of God, there is mystery, there are love stories, there is prose, there is prophecy, there is poetry, there is doctrine, there is advice in the Word of God. You'll find it all there. And so we should be eager to go into the Word of God and to begin to read. I, I want to inspire you today to be persons who are excited and eager to read the Word of God. So uh, I said, first of all, read regularly. I'm also saying read eagerly. Thirdly, I want to say read carefully, read carefully. And so if you're going to be a good student of the Word of God, then you need to apply the, the habits that good students will apply to study. So you need to find a good time and you need to find a good place. Now, if you do everything that you have to do for the entire day and you watch your television shows and you wait until you're so tired that you're ready to go to bed and then you pick up the Bible um, and... As soon as you pick it up, you read three verses and you fall asleep with the Bible. Put it on your pillow or whatever. Um, sleeping on the Bible is not going to help you. Putting it under your pillow 
even if you open it to Psalm 23, it's not going to help you very much. What you need to do is that you need to find a good place. You need to find a good time to be able to um, spend time reading the Word of God. A time when it's unhurried. When you don't have to hurry. Um, when you're free from distractions. That's important. You're, you're free from distractions. You're, you, you, you don't want a time when persons are going to be calling you regularly. Asking you to do things. So you find your own time, your own private space. Then you may want to read in a kind of systematic way. So decide where you're going to read. Um, think about, okay, um, is there a word that, that I want to um, read about? Or, or do I want to do a study about a particular thing? Um, you'll find that there are multiple verses in the Bible. Practice having a pen in hand and a notebook with you. Start writing things down. Um, it is important... Um, for even listening to a study like this, that you spend some time taking notes. When you go to church on Sundays, spend some time taking notes because this will help you to, dev to um, develop scholarly habits as it relates to the Word of God. But you can do a word study. Let's say you want to um, study the Holy Spirit. So you find places in Scripture um, that talk about the Holy Spirit, who He is. Look for those verses and begin to read them. Begin to think about them. Um, you may want to do a book study. Lots of people like to begin when they're really starting out in, in, in reading the Word. People like to begin in the book of John. Um, because the book of John lays out the plan of salvation really well. It talks about the life of Christ and what He came to do and all those things. And so you, you find your, your topic, you find your Word, um, and, and you begin to look for your verses and, and, and your books and your chapters that deal with those things. But what you want to do is that you want to read carefully. So... Um, I'm not one who would advocate that you, you know, you just break the Bible and wherever it opens to, you just read there. Now, now if that works for you, that's fine. Um, it may not be the most effective way. It's, it's more effective to have a systematic plan of what you want to read. Um, but don't just read for volume, read for understanding. So let's say you're doing a book study. You may want to read a part of a chapter and if you're not sure that you understand it well, you want to read it all over again. Um, you may even want to read it a third time. Think about what you're reading. Look at it. Analyze it. Take your time. Don't, don't rush through it. It is not for bragging rights. We don't want to read um, so that at the end of it we can say, Well, you know what? I read the Bible through 12 times in my lifetime. Well, we, we don't just want to do that. We want to be able to read um, in a systematic way because we want to get maximum benefits out of what we read. So read carefully. Then we want to read introspectively. When we are thinking of introspectively, we are thinking about applying what we read to ourselves, allowing the Bible to make us think, allowing the Bible to make us ask ourselves some questions. Um, all scripture is given for by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. So we want to read introspectively. We want to allow the word of God to correct us. We want to allow the word of God to instruct us in righteousness. So it's important that when we come to the word of God, we come with an open mind, not trying to get the Word of God to mean what we believe, but trying to get ourselves to believe what the Word of God means. Um, so, so it's important that we are allowing the Word of God to shape us, allowing the Word of God to mold us, to teach us, to guide us. Um, let the Word speak to you. Let it change your opinions and your attitudes and your positions so that when you read a soft answer turneth away wrath but grievous words stir up anger, you're not going to say, but God, you don't know my workmate. You don't know what she is like. Uh, what you need to do is allow the Word of God to shape you. And if we begin to live what the Word of God teaches us, um, we will do so much better. So don't try to get the Word to mean what you believe. Rather, believe what the Word of God teaches. So that's what it means when we're going to read introspectively. Start applying the Word of God to your life as you read it. Then we want to read prayerfully. Prayerfully. 
Remember that I, I said earlier that you probably may not understand everything that there is in the Word, but understand this, that the Holy Spirit is our helper. He is our helper, and He helps us to understand the Word. He interprets the Word of God for us. And Jesus said, uh, I'm going, but I'm sending you a teacher. He will teach you. He will reveal all things to you. And I believe that the Holy Spirit reveals the truth of the Word of God to us. Um, don't think for a minute that God wants His Word to be a mystery to us. That He doesn't want us to understand His Word. And so only certain people have the key to unlock the Word of God. God wants every child of His to understand His Word. His Word was written for us, for our understanding, for our benefit. So approach it prayerfully. Remember, it's the Word of God. Um, and remember that the carnal man is going to be unable to understand the things of God anyway. And so as a child of God, you, you, you are not carnal anymore. You are spiritual and you depend on the Holy Spirit to guide and to lead you and to help you. All right. Um, don't approach the word of God. Uh, believe it that you have all the answers. You, you don't have all the answers, but the answers are there. And as I said, the Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you. But prayerfully approach your Bible reading. Understand that you're depending on God to help you to understand his word so that you can apply that word to your life. And then I want you to read expectantly. Read expectantly. Expect the word of God to do something. The word of God is spirit and it's life. It is quick. It is powerful. And I believe that when we read the word of God, something happens. Something happens. Um, we may not feel it. But something is happening. We may not always see it initially, but something is happening. Something happens when the child of God looks into the Word of God. One writer says that when the child of God looks into the Word of God and sees the Son of God, he is transformed by the Spirit of God into the image of God for the glory of God. That's the, the power of of the word of God. Expect God to enlighten us as we read his word. Expect God to direct us, to, to feed us, to sustain us, to instruct us, to guide us, to reveal himself to us in his word. So my challenge to you today is to develop the habit for reading the word. I want to challenge you to read the word of God every day. I want you to start tomorrow. Um, to, to begin every day to develop that, that habit of reading the Word of God. Remember that our standard for living is in the Word of God. Remember that the principles we live by are in the Word of God. That our faith is a Bible-centered faith. And so I just shared with you a recipe for reading the Word of God. As the first part of a five-step plan for becoming students of the Word. So I said to you, read regularly. Read every day. Develop the habit of reading the Word of God. I said to you, read eagerly. Develop the appetite for the Word of God. Um, love the Word. Um, David said, oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation day and night. Um, sweet are your words unto me. Sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. He, he loved the Word of God. I, I said, read carefully. Take your time. Take your time. Do it in an unhurried way. But take your time, read the word, reread the word. Um, look, look if, you, if you have reference books, look at the reference books. Um, look at the commentaries if you have them. We'll talk a little bit about those um, in our next session. But, but spend time. Don't, don't, don't rush through it just to say that you've done it. Uh, I don't want you to do it legally. But I want you to do it joyfully, to enjoy doing it. Then read introspectively. Let the Word of God speak to you. Let the Word speak to you. That's going to be very important for you. Let the Word of God rebuke you, correct you, encourage you. Um, let it change your mindset. Let it inform you. That's going to be important for you. Read prayerfully. Seek the Lord even as you read His Word. Pray the Word. As you read the Word, begin to pray the Word. Begin, begin to Talk to God about the word that you are reading and then read expectantly. Expect God to do something in your life as you begin to read his word. That's a recipe for becoming a good Bible reader. Or 
read regularly. E, read eagerly. C, read carefully. I, read introspectively. P, read prayerfully. And E, read expectantly. I want to challenge you today to take the Word of God, utilize that fantastic tool that God has given to us, and allow God to speak to you through His Word. Join us next time as we look at the second step in our five-step plan for becoming students of the Word. In our next session, we're going to be talking about studying the Word. Today we talked about reading the Word. Next time we're going to talk about studying the Word. Please join us then. God bless you.